Hello, hello. Oh, Lewis, I can't hear you. Oh, because I'm muted. Because you're muted. <laughs> I'm muted. Classic. Uh, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm okay. I haven't been on holiday Not like you, though. Well, yeah, I, I've been on holiday in Spain. I know we can't see it, but I have been. You have a sun. you have a Norwegian tan. Yeah, I have a Norwegian tan, <laughs> and I just want to apologize before we start if I just mute myself and remove myself from the camera mid sentence. I do have a little bit of a cough. It's not COVID, don't worry. Uh, but instead of making you listen to my cough, I will mute myself even if it's mid sentence so just a heads up that's very uh, that's very kind of you don't want to destroy uh, people's ears you know, um you know. I'll say hello to everyone in the audience that we have if anyone's anyone is new or um been to the webinar before just say hi in the chat just so we know we that just, you're there. let's enable the chat now so you all can say hi there we go you should be able to say hello. Who have we got here? Who Who's got? in the room? Just say hello. But yeah, we've got a um, we've got a very interesting webinar for you today. We have our first got... external guest. Oh, it's very exciting. Um, I'll just start by saying hi, everyone. Welcome back. If you've been here before, welcome. If it's your first time, uh, we're so happy to have you here in the Vev Lounge. The Vev Lounge is a space where you can learn everything about Vev and the industry and the product and get some inspiration, meet some really cool people that are tied to Vev. Um, I'm Malin, head of partnerships. And as always, I have my partner in crime, Lewis, a product specialist. That's me. Hello. Yeah. yeah. You've, if you've been here and before, you know us. We've been so. here before. <laughs> Someone who's not been here before, who we're really, really, really excited to introduce you all to and chat to today about how she's built a no-code agency is Hannah Springit. Let's bring her in. Hey, Hi. Han. Hi. How are you guys? I'm Hi, okay. Hannah. I, I think Marlon was coughing then because the camera went off. I was like, of <laughs> course. Coughing. The first thing I did was like having a cough. But hi, Hannah. It's so hi. good to have you join us at Vev Lounge. I'm, well, I'm you... really happy to be here, and I'm definitely in a lounge setup. So yeah, definitely. I'm, yeah, you I'm are. Eating slightly because it's a summer room, and I've had to shut the doors to stop my uh, parents, nephews, you know, random cats coming into the into the room. But yeah, we're, we're good to start. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't mind a viral moment of someone coming into the background like, hey. <laughs> well, we have just installed a hot tub on the, on, the, on the terrace kind of thing. So it was a bit too dodgy. Ooh. So the camera will definitely stay this direction for sure. Oh, okay. you, you could have done it from the hot tub. But, uh... <laughs> oh, yeah. next time. Next time. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. So yeah, um, it'd be good for the audience to introduce yourself and, um, you know, what, what you do. <laughs> okay, I can take it from there. So, um, yep, yeah, I'm Hannah Springett. I am founder and creative director. Uh, we've already had a laugh this morning that we're not, not using the word CEO. <laughs> Cringe. Um, but yeah, I started uh, H Labs. Um, we're soon to change the name. It's currently Hannah Springett Limited, which uh, makes me die every time I have to say that out loud. Um, we've gone from just me as a freelancer working with no code tools with a variety of clients to having, I think the last count last week was 42 two people which is kind of crazy scary um but we've got a global team um across india romania amsterdam um the uk um we have focused on no code platforms so vev is one of our partners and we really want to specialize in interactive storytelling so if you've got a good story to tell uh we want to hear about it and then we want to present that to the world in experiential content so that could be a long uh, scrolling um publishing like editorial 
tutorial piece. That could be a microsite or it could be a module of content like a quiz or an interactive infographic or a timeline. So we kind of really cover a range of products um, and experiences, I should say. I'm trying to get the word product out of my uh, buzzword terminology when I'm talking about this. <laughs> but we want to sell creative stories, uh, whatever the size and what for whatever budget. Um, so we work mainly with publishers. We have recently dabbled in the agency world, a couple of brands that work with us direct. Um, but yeah, we partner with NoCo Tools, like Fev, uh, to create content. And the, the, the most important bit of that is shortening the uh, time span to create it. So we've got some of our timelines down to a couple of hours, a couple of days, um, instead of you know some of the traditional web-based projects that would have taken months previously. We just know that our USP is far turnaround, so it's, it's been good to excel in that space, really. That's cool. I'm yeah, one thing that I find... Okay. Sorry, Lewis. You know, you go ahead. You go ahead. Nah. One thing that I like find super interesting about your agency as well is that you kind of niche in on that, you know, interactive experience, storytelling format, but also uh, on no code platforms. So could you maybe talk a little bit about how you uh, enter that space, why you decided to build your agency purely on like a, on, in the no code space? And yeah, it's just interesting that you've focused in on that. Segment. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a kind of a long history. I'm not. Gonna, I'll give you the short version. Um, I trained as a graphic designer, and I think when I left uni, I had the opportunity to work for an agency that worked heavily with print, uh, like getting printed magazines uh, with all the retouching, the artworking. And so a lot of the content coming through the studio was magazine based, which was through, through the publishers. Um, and then when the iPads came out, there was like this sudden rush to make interactive magazines. So as a designer, a lot of the publishers were kind of coming to us with the brief of how do we make this digital, how do we replicate this kind of print asset as a, as a digital entity and some of the first um no code <laughs> execute that were like indesign plugins that you literally could it, there was one called mag plus it was the first one that i used in like 2010 i think it was and so we did um an app for marks and spencers we did like the uh, like an argos magazine with another kind of plugin and so that point it was really looking at editorial content but making it digital and so from then on i kind of pursued my my career we did a bit of e-commerce in that agency um and then the owner of that agency um is the owner of Seros, and that's one of um, the other platforms that we partner with. Um, I worked with Seros for a really long time um, until I set up the agency. So I've always been in that kind of no-code space, but I think the most important thing for me is that I knew that instead of um, kind of working on the tech side of it um, and offering those solutions, it was more about the creative solution problem solving, working with the clients, understanding what the story is that we were telling. Um, so we knew that there was a lot of enterprise clients using no-code, but they don't necessarily always have the time to invest in training their own staff. Um, so I think when I was, you know, working at Seros, working with their clients to train them on how to use it, I was always more intrigued into the creative brief um, rather than the tech brief. So I think now, you know, having the opportunity to set up my agency and not just work for one, but work with a number of partners, it's been a really exciting couple of years because we did a partnership with Wirewax, which is interactive video. They've recently been bought out by Vimeo. So this webinar platform, is done with Vimeo, which is a partner as well. And we, we're really looking forward to just picking up those kind of interactions that you can do with new formats. It's just really, really exciting. So whatever the scale, we've got a no-code tool that does something like it. We you know, even use like Typeform for data capture and like small quizzes or surveys. And they can just be injected into a normal article page that you've got. Again, you can put it in a VEF page. You can put it in you know, a normal CMS. Yeah. So I think for us, looking at that range of tools has been really exciting the creative is the most important bit. <laughs> so in like practice, when you have all these tools under your belt, like you have a huge toolbox and your team is quite, um, like they're experts in more than one tool. How, like what inspired you to do, to become like that expert in the no code space and then build your agency on purely that no code? Like, of course, your background in, in graphic design in early 2000s, your background working with uh, no-code tools yourself and clients. But what was it in you that kind of like 
click that or tick that box of like, I want to put all of my my cash on this. I want my team to be well versed in no code tools. And that's my like goal. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I think the, the bit for me, um, coming back to that graphic designer link is that working in traditional agencies where you have the process of doing a design file and um, back in the day it was more photoshop um, and you would hand that website design over to a developer and it would disappear for months on end and you would get something back that you know it is it's so funny i talk to my team about this all the time that one of the first games you play as a kid is spot the difference right <laughs> and i think for me as a web designer it was so frustrating doing a design it would go to tech and like you'd go to a dev agency normally outsourced into a different country the communication would be taken off you and there's that handover period where the, the developers then go oh well we hit a problem there so we're going to change that bit of the design to fit what's possible and I think with no code tools it empowers the designer to have that ownership and that that's the really exciting thing for me that we work with a range of designers at different skill sets but if you come to work for H Labs you know we have a lot of graduates I teach at two universities so again like having graduates come in and us training on the tools it means that they can use their design skills but also see it implemented and I think that's the that's the main difference that really excited me when starting the business because handing over your designs and then not having control of it anymore I mean I'm a bit of a control freak so that's probably where I started but again it just meant that we had the real finesse of the designers going okay well that animation isn't quite what I wanted or you know th this image isn't quite cropped right I want to make sure that that works properly or that content you know from a copywriter's point of view they can go in and go right well I'm going to change that because it's easy enough for them to adapt to learning how to use that tool and I think it is a different model to different agencies designers are normally put in one box developers are put in another box but for us the excitement that my team have about learning tech and you know always learning new things was definitely more of a you know that that was the, what they were interested in doing with us which is a bit different and right now there are I think someone told me yesterday there's like 250,000 agencies in the UK alone or something like you have to have your point of difference and I think for, for, for that don't quote me on that stat I was drinking wine <laughs> <laughs> but, but again you have to find that usp and i think what we've got at the moment is a really good relationship so starting with these partnerships we know that you have enterprise clients that need assistance and we're ready to go with people that are fully trained you know that want to work on great content so i think it just cuts out that you know training and onboarding phase that is is difficult um but yeah the timelines are much shorter so which is I've just got one like question. Just following um, up on, sorry, I've just got one oh, yeah, question got, from Eleanor well, in the chat. Question. We can answer that first. Let's take yeah. that first. Do you have any developers on your team? So that's the thing. Um, we have a tech director um, and he actually really helps us in initial conversations with working out what platform is right for our clients. Um, we don't have anyone that is just a developer at all um so if it doesn't fit in that no code space you know we have a partnership with webflow as well um that stuff requires a little bit more code knowledge but the developers we work with there do design as well so again it's definitely design and production always needs to be in the arena so well done for pulling that out but no i don't just have to. <laughs> yeah. and i find that so 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 interesting and uh quite inspiring actually but you mentioned that your team is really excited about new tech and learning this new tech. And I think uh, for me personally, having worked in sales for many years, like some one of the challenges is like exciting people with new tech, especially if you have a skill in one tech, you might not want to change to another tech or just like getting someone to or convince them that, you know, this is a tech that you should work in every single day of your work life. How do you excite your team to learn new tech like is it just it do they just have that that skill like that you know yeah. excitement in them or is it something that you like really encourage from the start and I, I think for us is it's the it's less about learning the tech itself it's 
having the ownership of the project from start to finish, that they can start something, do the discovery period, speak to a client very early on. We make sure that we're really transparent with all of our clients. They they meet the junior designers, they meet the interns, they literally speak to everyone on the team very early on. So if a junior designer or a midweight designer is working on that project, they'll work directly with the client. That you know designer can then work on the design, work on the execution, and you know Vev is so easy to pick up. That's the joy of no code that people can learn it relatively quickly. Um, obviously, to get to expert level, you need to know the, the the bells and whistles and how to do the more intricate parts of it. But the reason why it's a model that's worked for us is that it's relatively quick. Our training on Vev is two days. Our, our training on some of the other platforms is a bit longer than that. And again, it's it's about having designers come in and go, okay, I've got that tool under my belt. I can do the training. Okay, I can now help replicate this work. And a lot of our clients work on templates. So when they come in, they might work on a templated project first and then move up to owning a whole look and feel and a design and build from scratch. So there's definitely like levels of execution that we do. And personal development in our team is so important that – we obviously have um, platform owners like Megan is our kind of <laughs> resident expert that works with you Megan, every every month to get the updates. Shout and, out Megan. Yeah, shout out Megan. She'll be happy with that. <laughs> uh, again, having having experts that are really driven by one technology means that they'll be the ones holding that relationship with the tech, getting the bug reports, getting the new features, looking at the roadmap, you know, checking in on you know webinars and just expanding their knowledge in that areas and then everyone on the team yeah. then has the base level to be able to dip in because I think for us we needed to make sure it was super important that it wasn't just one person that could do each tech we have you know a base level training for everybody so then they can kind of choose where to specialize in a lot of our designers might come in um you know and think that they, they just want to learn a bit of everything. They don't know what aspects of design they want to go into. Um, so Megan, shout out again. She has got a lot of people project management skills so again the partnership thing did really work because she could do a lot more of the organizational parts of it as well as design we've got other designers that want to go into illustration and pulling that into our remit has been really good same with animation same with motion graphics and now we're actually hiring content writers as well to focus on the story itself rather than just the visual aesthetics so for our team it's a variety of skills that are going to learn but the main key is that ownership of seeing something right through to the end rather than handing it off and not knowing what the final product's going to look like. Wow. Yeah. So when it comes to, like, obviously, uh, you don't have any developers or any on your team that are just developers, and you're kind of just, you you put all your eggs in the no-code space. Do you find any challenges with that? And what are some of the things that you're looking to change in the no-code space to kind of take, that like in the future what do you envision will change here yeah it's, it's a really good question and we get asked that a lot uh, would we ever like turn down a development project and last year we had a pretty crazy brief uh from red bull to develop a kind of virtual tour in 3d and you know our first incentive was to look at the options we had available um to use one of the tools that we had and <laughs> through problem solving we realized we got down to the end of it and needed to build it in webgl um but we brought that back in to have the front end of a no-code platform so i know that vev has those 3d tools now we can bring in like lotties we can bring in a lot of those extra as I said, bells and whistles, that we've normally found that it's safer for me to sell in the no-code space. We're not we're not turning it down. In the future, we might be ready for it. Um, and I think that brief last year really pushed the whole team to go, oh, okay, well, how can we apply this to something else? And it meant that we looked into Spark AR because we had 3D assets. So then we looked at activation and started thinking about, okay, well, how can we activate this on social? You know, the no-code tools aren't going to create an Instagram story for us, but the filter thing was the, the access point. So for us, we're trying to focus the future in having more of a, a whole agency vibe where we can take a brief and find the solution that's right for them. Um, I'm not going to rule it out if I had a big enough project mm -hmm. to get some developers in. Maybe I'd change my mind, but right now it's not. <laughs> right now it's not on the roadmap. <laughs> um, no. I mean, sorry, Lewis, go ahead. Yeah, We've been talking ask, a lot. Um, in terms of like the sort of learning curve that you find with using a no-code tool from, I guess, like you obviously have a lot of designers on your team that have 
probably historically come from using things like Photoshop and InDesign and things like that. How have you found that learning curve from transitioning from using similar products like that, mm -hmm. using to no code tools? I think um, the the joy about Vev and the other no code tools we use is, is the it, the ease of use that you've set up the UI, you've set up a lot of the systems to feel very familiar to to some of you know some of the Adobe Suite products. I think the introduction of FigJam and and Figma like that that's our kind of standard now. That I would I I mean I can't believe we used to design whole web pages on Photoshop in different layers like it. it my mind is blown how we used to do that. Can you remember when it was like before you had like auto recover as well? And it could yeah. be like three days into a project and then you lose your work and you're like, oh God, that's three days of my work. Whereas oh, like Figma cool. is very different to that. So we're making sure that all of the team have basic Figma training as I start now. And I think the no code tools, Vev especially, we were on your beta testing to make sure that there is that integration. And I think that's going to be the industry standard that you need to be on collaborative tools, not on something that sits on your desktop or exists as software it's in the cloud it's forward thinking it has to be collaborative to allow you to work together and those things are what makes the efficiency so much better compared to when I was doing web design <laughs> which is kind of baffling to even think back to what that process was so you know the collaborative things the comments the you know the drag and drop nature of all of these things is is super easy to pick up um I think that's answering your question. I've kind of forgotten where. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You mentioned like a couple of sort of points as to why no code tools and Vev is is good for your agency. So time to market, easy to use, excites the team to become tech savvy. What would you say, like, if we if we're gonna be a little bit cheeky here and a little bit biased towards Vev, oh, you know? That's fine, that's why we're here. Why, like, why do you think Vev fits so well with your agency and what's like, why do you think Vev is a good fit there? Obviously we're partners and everything, but why do you think Vev is a good fit for your agency? Um, there's a partnership page that I know we're gonna chat about in a bit, um, but I think the key features that we pulled out that are a differentiator, like, um, the responsive framework, I think, you know, some of the other tools still have certain limitations on, you know, desktop, mobile, tablet. And I think having your extended fixed margins where you can have more flexible design is a, is a really uh, a key feature. It means, uh, you know, efficiency on building out those breakpoints is super easy. Um, I think a lot of your pre-made like widgets or the things that have already been pre-done, like say you've got an, an accordion or a carousel or something like that, you can drag and drop that onto the page and then customize it a bit. That That's a really strong thing rather than having to manually make that from scratch and then copy and paste it. Um, I think the other features on there, horizontal scrolling and parallax elements for us, different scroll speeds and stuff is is one of the ones that stands out. Like it's super easy to add those transitions and micro animations to the piece, um, which is, you know, it's super intuitive and really quick to do. Um, so I think all of those things are kind of the, you know, winning situation for, for us. Um, but I think what, um, you know, some of the other tools are playing catch up, like, you know, quick is the three different editors that the fact you have three different like editors for different entry points so as designers we go and design the whole thing but the fact that you've got and we laughed about it earlier the editor's editor or the content editor um is that you could i could have my copywriter or my editorial specialist go in just edit the copy great cool make a change we're done um but i think leveling up for that bit where you asked about developers you can still get a developer to go in and go right that's the basic that's that's what the page is doing right now i want to tweak that i want to change the settings here i want to push that a little bit further um and having the code editor means that you can level up with someone that is a bit more code savvy that wants to focus on more design in an easier framework that's going to be super good so for, for us it just means that you can level up the type of output that you do um depending on what skill set you've got on the team which is great for us han you're almost pitching vev better than i do so <laughs> all right well you've got the recording for this after right <laughs> <laughs> i think that's a nice segue though into yeah, maybe so. going into some of the projects that you've made because you've created a lot of great projects in vev and i think they're quite inspirational so let's yeah what well, well, uh, even, an even nicer segue maybe we should first look at the uh the partnership 
page. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. Malin, I'm going to put a question back to you. Like, okay. why did Bev decide to start agency partnerships? Well, obviously, we want more people to use Bev. There's no secret in that. <laughs> but we also think that I think, you know, like, it's quite a ballsy answer, but we do think Web is the future of web creation. And when we saw that your agencies was specialized in no code um, and you work with the type of companies and brands that we think should also work in Web, it was basically a no brainer. Um, one thing we find it challenging sometimes with agencies because it's very project based as well. So they often want to wait until they have a project to start mm -hmm. using Web, uh, which I think this is a conversation we've had as well at some point that, you know, but let's be proactive and have Web under your toolbox so that when you have that project, you're like ready to publish it. But uh, obviously we have the partnership uh, with agencies, which is a bit more exclusive. Uh, if our clients uh, need help with production, we introduce them to you as an agency. But we also have the referral program where you can get um, a bonus and your your client in return can get a discount on Vev if, if you're a certified partner. Woo! This is a win-win situation, really. Um, and, and yeah, there, there's no shame in saying that Obviously, we want everyone to use Web. We think we think and hope that Web is the last uh, web creation tool out there. So, that's kind of did that answer your question? Yeah, it did. It did. And look, we're happy to be you know one of the two chosen agency partners. I think it's a really exciting time for us. I think the referral program really works for us. Um, and so this is why we've put our partnership page together. Um, so you can access this from Bev's site or you can access this from ours. Um, so again, it's just a one pager. It's a campaign uh, landing page which shows some of our examples. Um, so you can kind of scroll down this this page. You can see some of our um, our work on there the reasons why we do it wwf was a referral through through this uh, partnership so they needed help with overflow work they didn't have anyone internal to take on this project and there's got some really nice touches in this piece where we've got the the parallax scrolling elements with the foreground and the background moving forward which you can't do on some of the other platforms um in an embedded uh, framework um so it's really lovely working with such a good client as well i mean like our, our team went mad when they knew we were going to work for wwf <laughs> not the rest of us uh but for, but for the wildlife chat that's like you know everyone was like super super excited um so we've picked out some uh some key uh features here that i mentioned before so talking about the collaboration talking about um the responsiveness of that um and again i think this last one's just yeah we just want to push the limits of what we're doing with our with our designs really. Um, and I think what is a kind of key part of this, and I can see the, the economist has mentioned here, it also has a really good templated solution. Like we've kind of got from the easy access point, um, you know, we can turn around, you know, new content based on a template in probably two to three days. Um, at a push, it could be wow. like even less time than that. But again, most of our projects work within about a two week turnaround time. I think the WWF one um, was briefed and delivered in a month, uh, which is really cool. Um, and then I, I think, think that, yeah, <laughs> that we can, we can mm -hmm. jump into that one actually, I think probably to share. Uh, which one's right? The... Yeah, uh, let's jump, on, jump onto WWF. Yeah, let's, let's have a look. Um, let me switch my window to WWF. There we go. Hey, fab. So, yeah, as we mentioned, this came through the referral um, piece. Like, we wanted to make sure we you know, really stuck to their brand guidelines. They had, um, you know, quite strict um, rules and regulations on what we needed to do. We added a navigation at the top. Um, we added these kind of pictures where you can see that there's just a really slight movement between the bird and the background, which you can see with the owl a little bit further down. Um, but I think um, with this, it was, you know, super easy to create um, the modules that are in there. They've got a nice horizontal script section in here. Um, and that doesn't normally, on other no-code tools, having horizontal scroll in an embedded um, for, and sorry, just to simplify this for everyone listening, embedded is when you've got header at the top, which is an existing CMS, footer at the bottom, which is an existing CMS, but all the content in the middle is embedded from this other tool. So this this is, you know, having parallax movement in this setting is, is, is a real winner. 
Um, and we get down to my favorite bit, which is this owl. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> really gorgeous. The three layers um, and made sure that they had different scroll speeds uh, set to them. So there's just that, that sense of immersiveness because it's edge to edge um, visual content there. Uh, but you know, it's still a relatively simple piece. Like we've got um, video content in there. Um, further down the page, there's some iconography, breaking things into bits um, that's a bit more digestible. So again, from a content structure point of view, whenever we're doing a story, we make sure that it's bite-sized content that you can take away. Nothing's too overwhelming. Um, but yeah, we were really happy, and WWF were really happy on how this this turned out as well. Yeah, I think amazing. there's a lot of beautiful oh. use of animation in here as well, where it's like you yeah. know coming in from different directions but it's not a, it's not a case that it's overwhelming either it mm. adds fluidity to the page yeah. um that makes you want to engage with it and scroll further um, yeah. so I think and, and the story is so lovely i think you know with wwf like they know that they're talking about a good cause it's just it was just so great to get our, our hands on such wonderful content and there was tickers uh, animated on those numbers in that section and you know it's it's little things like that that don't come as standard for some of the other tools where you might have to integrate other code to do that um so it's, it's you know always a good to have yeah really good it's interesting as well because in the last vev lounge we talked about some of our favorite vev features and i think you've used like all of them in this project so <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of them. and i love to hear that scroll speed is one of your favorite features as well it's actually my favorite feature so. <laughs> yeah, okay okay louis yeah, we're together on that <laughs> um, so you've also created another project for other way that is um really inspiring do you want to share yeah let's talk, talk let's talk do that one yeah, yeah if you open that one up and uh, so a bit of background and um, this actually comes from like another uh kind of it's, it's called creative collabs we run a, a campaign which is called creative collabs.co.uk um and it means that we work on pro bono projects uh, pretty much what it's supposed to be once a quarter it feels like we do one a month at this point uh <laughs> but uh, we want to help um People tell better stories. And some of those, when we think it's a good cause, we think it's worth talking about if a budget is an issue. Um, you know, we talk amongst the team whether we want to, you know, gain something from doing that project on a pro bono basis. So other way came to us. It was a friend of our uh, head of ops um, and they started a new environmental venture that was helping, you know, clients to become, you know, more environmentally friendly, making sure that, you know, climate is a hu huge thing. Uh, so it was a, re you know, really good cause. It was a um, really good topic. And so our team, we did this in six days turnaround where where we did a bit of a brand refresh, did the landing page in Vev, hosted it on a vanity domain um, and did a poster and some of their logo uh, brand things for it. But to do that in six days turnaround, I mean, I should really have charged some money for that. Um, but, you know, <laughs> this, this is why we do these projects. So if you scroll down the piece, um, there's some, you know, just super nice, simple animations. We've used the masking of the images just to make it look a bit more friendly, a bit less blocky. Um, and as you scroll down the piece, again, it's just really nice bright colors um you know quite fresh uh branding for it really clear text because accessibility and seo is a thing for them um and then we've got i think they've got hover states on them as well haven't they on these okay my bad it must be the other bit <laughs> okay <laughs> this is why i need my team to demo their stuff now rather than me yeah. um, <laughs> but again really beautiful piece we did some bespoke iconography in this section with our illustration team um, yeah, it's just super feel good project, and like it's just been nice to see it come to life in such a small amount of time. So yeah, six days turnaround from start to finish on this one. Yeah, yeah that's very very impressive. So obviously you have like a lot of verse versatility in the way that your team designs the different uh, projects. Obviously, like following brand guidelines for your clients, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But what would you say is like where do you find inspiration? Like how do your how does your team get inspired to to do this? Do you have any secret like resources yeah. or anything you kind of share with the viewers? Yeah, the team will laugh at this one. So um, <laughs> we, we, we there, there's two parts of this. We actually said as one of the business goals for this year is that we wanted to win some design awards. And it's it's really funny that I found my personal development plan from when I was at my first agency. And it said I would have my own agency by the time I was 30. I would employ graduates and make sure I was giving back to, to students going into their careers. And the last one was that I want a 
website to win an award on awards or site inspire or, or website of the day um so that's that's our objective for the next year is to get on to one of those uh, award sites um so we, we we literally look at awards um all the time for the best in web design content um i know vev are talking at their design conference in amsterdam in a couple of weeks which we're going to be attending all and right, we're going to be person, which i'm so excited about um but again um they really do showcase some of the best of what web, web design has to offer um, and then second to that I think it's really important for the team uh, to share where inspiration comes from for them because it's not always on, an, on a site like that um, so as part of our stand-up meeting every morning we have 30 minutes where everyone's on a zoom call because we're a fully remote company um, the last 10 minutes of that meeting every day is someone has to share some form of inspiration it could be an exhibition that they've been to it could be an Instagram account that they just can't not follow um, it could be, you know, something from awards or it could be some really nice typography or a magazine they've read or whatever. And I think that's where we're trying to up the level of creative output because, you know, we've got a very young team. We've got a lot of graduates that haven't executed everything that they're seeing and, you know, taking in all the time. And we're just making sure that the reference point in the project process is we're trying to give more time to the team members to make sure they've done their reference collection they've done the research to make sure that we're proposing something that is not just copying something that we've done previously i know a lot of our work is templated and production led but for us to raise the bar for this we need to be looking at what's most forward thinking things in digital and trying to that. get yeah. of the, the crowd so yeah might, Every might have to steal that idea of sharing that inspiration part i love that that's Go great and also can we just applaud you for ticking two out of three goals for <laughs> for that you one of the other ones was earn more money which i can definitely take that one too oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 And that comes with it, doesn't it? Yeah. So just like moving the conversation a little bit back into the fact that you have a no-code agency or you're building projects for clients, completely no-code. Do you have any advice for people that want to either build their own no-code agency or just build for clients no-code, maybe as a freelancer? Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for them? <laughs> well, I don't want to give out too much advice, otherwise we're coming after my life. But <laughs> <laughs> what I would say is um, it's making sure you're doing something you're passionate about. Um, because for me, doing great web content was what I was always passionate about. And I think when my job was too salesy or too about training or whatever, it was kind of always thinking about, okay, what's the story? What's the creative? What am I putting out into the world that is really exciting to look at? And, you know, obviously I'm learning more about the written side of interactive storytelling now that we've got an editorial specialist, but for, for me, it's always been a visual side of it. Um, but I think you've got to do something you're passionate about and setting yourself goals that are achievable as well. I think at the beginning, I, I had no idea we were going to scale it like we did. It was just gradually, it happened very organically and we want to keep that as part of the business. Um, me and my head of office will make sure it grows organically rather than cold calling people being like, do you want a website? Like that's definitely not what I want to do. Um, so it's just about making great partnerships and working on things that you believe in. It was easier to like scale up what we were doing due to those reasons. I realise I've now got this halo effect that the sun is now coming in on my face reflecting on my laptop. So po apologies. Fantastic. But I, like it. It, I just I assumed you turned on your ring light. Almost, <laughs> yeah, it's just a natural ring light. Um, um, I was going to yeah, ask, so um, based, based, yeah, so based on that, um, in the next sort of like maybe like five years or so, how do you see no code advancing and how that, fits in with your agency or what would your um, ideal scenario for that be? I think we need to look at um no code tools are trying to make it as easy for people to do it themselves as possible so as an agency we need to adapt to accommodate that um you know, the template route we do now means that it's easy for a client and we shorten the time scales but with more easier to use templates and editors and just changing copy and changing the odd images and things like that it's going to get even easier so we have to make sure we're coming up with the next 
cool thing to show in storytelling to make sure that we don't become redundant with how fast the no-code tools are moving. I think with the introduction of Lottie, with 3D files, with, you know, more experimental typography, animation, I think it's going back to what, again, it's that same thing I've been mentioning the whole meeting, it feels that it's just the creative, the story is the most important and then getting the the imagery, the assets, and the actual content that reflects that, that's going to keep it fresh, regardless of what the tech does. And I think, you know, I don't want to be sitting here going, oh, well, all no-code tools are going to move into the metaverse, because I don't think that's going to be the case. If there's going to be a point where you actually need to read the content on the page and digest it. Um, so, you know, we might dabble in a bit of 3D, but I won't be changing my whole business to that. Um, but again, I think it's keeping up with the code you know no code tools that we use seeing what new ones are on the market and i think from a personal goal for us with a lot of our clients being in the us i really want to have a south american team by next year even if it's a couple of people just to help some of the hours but i think having 24 hour production would really help some of our clients so that's a personal goal for me um but yeah global uh is the, the word i'd go for <laughs> if it was about my stuff nice we actually have, um, this is time to move into the segment we call the open mic. So the audience can ask as many questions as they want um, or grab the microphone, sing a song, whatever they feel like. But uh, you've mentioned so many great things about, you know, how you work with no code, how you work with web, how, why you even dabbled into no code in the first place. So that's been really, really great to hear. There was a really great question here from the audience that is, you said you can create web based work in around two weeks, even three days for some. How does that compare to the time you needed for similar projects before you made the no code leap? Um, at agencies, it, I'll also not put it down to like all agencies take longer to create web content. And there, there's reasons behind that. It, you know, if you are operating at operating at a larger scale things take longer because you've got more stakeholders you've got more people involved um you have to get more sign off periods more amends things like that so i don't want to put it on the fact that when i worked at an agency it took longer but some of the the web development if you're you know some of the projects i used to work on were full site designs which were multiple pages they needed site mapping they needed ux they needed you know testing all of those things so i don't want to undercut what agencies do in that realm because that's still very much needed i think where no code is really helping to reduce the timelines is on repeatable campaign projects that you might I have got a shorter shelf life because, you know, the things that we work on are relatively for an advertorial campaign or, you know, like you saw with the WF, it's one story that they're talking about right now that's driving traffic to a sign up form or a particular KPI. And I think, you know, if you're looking at a single landing page that you might have a developer work on in HTML, you could get a super fast developer that could turn that around in two weeks when they've got the design. Um, but what we were seeing is it's normally months to weeks or weeks to days is the difference um, on that. Now, obviously, it's project specific and what's the scope and how many people are signing it off is normally the problem. But yeah, for the same sort of thing, if it takes us for three days, I think to get a developer do that from scratch, you've been looking at a couple of weeks. Um, but for definitely for the bigger microsite builds, you could be looking at months to, to turn that around with a back end CMS and all of that stuff. Yeah, and imagine yeah. The, the cost, um, obviously, uh, yeah. more, time, more, <laughs> yeah. more, uh, more hourly rates uh, come into play yeah. as well. So, uh, yeah, that's yeah. definitely been an issue in the past. Um, we've got another question from Eleanor, which I'll just put on the screen, let everyone see. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you produce most of and what does your clients come back for? We actually have these stats. Um, and if you give me one second, I'm not going to share my screen. I actually have the accurate uh, statistic on project type. All right. So in the last in the last year, 55.2% of our client well, revenue has been driven from single campaign pages. So that's long scrolling pages like you saw with WWF. Um, the next kind of biggest um, part of it, 
with just over 20% of our revenue comes from modules. So what we mentioned before about smaller bite-sized bits of micro content could be a quiz, could be a soundbite, could be a Spotify playlist, could be something you're injecting into another site, um, which is on a smaller framework, which is you know pretty cool. Um, and then we've got like 10% of our revenue coming from actual full microsites with multiple pages and navigation, standalone domains, um, which you know is quite exciting for us. And then the rest of the, the work that we get briefed on could be video assets, it could be interactive video, it could be PowerPoint redesigns, it could be social media assets. So we still do the, the typical like content creation as well as the no code stuff, but majority of that. So that should be a very accurate answer. Yeah, really, yeah, what yeah. our production I is. Like that, in that. that was great. <laughs> Um, and I guess on a similar ilk to that, I guess you probably, if you've got your statistics up, someone's asked, how do you measure, uh, measure ROI when using no code tools? Okay. It's well, for us, really yeah. It's a, it's a tough one to answer without, for, for each client, for each client it's very different. I think in the publishing space and now what we've found with agencies is that we've been looking at go to market strategies that allow us to offer our clients, so say a publisher, um, with a fixed type of project. So it might be a simple, medium or complex project. Um, we agree a cost for those types of projects. It could be based on a template, like I mentioned. Um, and by looking at those fixed timelines or whatever, it allows that publisher to go and sell that, knowing that they don't need to come back to my team and scope it differently every time. So it allows, you know, much faster sales to happen, really. <laughs> if, they, if they've got a fixed cost for a landing page, they can go and sell 20 of them, 30 of them, whatever, and know that they can deliver. So at the moment, for our no-code agency, our revenue is coming from the resellers. Obviously, we come up with a sip, you know, nice amount of products for them to go to market with, Conan, this being one of them. They, they go out and sell that. They've got their own, uh, you know, way of selling that to their end client but we do the same with agencies um you know we work with an agency called emperor we do that with annual reports so we have fixed uh types so if they've got a simple one medium one complex one they can come to us so the, the roi for them just means that they're delivering everything much faster they're making profit on that and they've got a fixed process that has been tried and tested so that they can replicate it and scale it um so i'm hoping that answers your question for us um the return on investment just means no code is in that we've turned over 450 projects in the last two and a half years, which is a hefty amount of contracts, <laughs> as you can imagine. Um, but it's speed <laughs> market, it's, it's a lot of content flying around. So for us, it's speed to turn out uh, content. And with all those projects, how, because um, obviously you have in your teams, you have different, obviously different departments and different um, people doing different things. So out of those, was it 450 projects you said roughly? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many of those, how many people in your team turn those out? So we have... 40 people when I like 42 people on the on the books and um, we use a mm -hmm. variety of people on payroll um, a set number of team members that are five days a week subcontractors and then we have a couple of part-time uh, freelancers that come in on specialist projects which will be those kind of you know the more kind of Cody specific uh, design developers that we've got on certain platforms and things but the the core team that we have like on daily calls every day is probably 25 to 28 people weekly like yeah on on the morning meeting that's how many people we've got like turning this stuff out yeah and Vev, i think yeah, we've that's... got 12 12 trained people on Vev right now so amazing that's uh that's a lot of projects <laughs> um and then we've got another question from eleanor who's maybe maybe going to be a potential client um how do you price your services hourly uh, we work with um, two different uh, paid plans. We work on SOW, which is project by project. That's normally how people work with us to start with. They want to try us out. They want to feel comfortable that we, you know, they don't give us too much budget to, to mess up with. But um, yeah, it will be, you come in with a brief. We've got a briefing quiz at handspringit.com slash brief us. Um, so if you fill out the type form quiz, it literally tells our project managers the minute you click submit we get a slack notification with the brief um they take that into consideration set up a kickoff call and we'll set up that project based on a day rate at the moment um normally with sows it's kind of loosely based around uh that that day rate that we do um 
when we kind of do a couple of projects for clients and they know that they are, our services are well worth uh, well worth it um we move on to retain models um and that means that we then build hourly that they pay up front rather than after the project and on that retainer we just tick off the amount of hours that we've done and that actually means it's more flexible for the the publishers and you know the the agencies because then they're only paying for what we've worked on so if we do a project in 2.2 days they're only paying for that uh, versus like a five-day scope that we might have had to guess how long it was going to take if it was a project by project basis. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Now, Do you ever invite your clients into VEV as a part of iteration for projects or give giving feedback? Um, at the moment, um, with the Economist, like we have a really good working relationship, so they'll they'll, they'll comment in that way. Um, it's nothing I'd rule out at the moment. We're constantly looking for process efficiencies that we we do. Um, we have other tools and stuff for commenting and bits and pieces, but it's nothing that we, we do do it with with them. Uh, just not for every client at the moment. But it depends on what the client feels comfortable to do. If they do want to hand off this type of project, sometimes they just want to see the finished thing um, and give feedback on a annotated powerpoint sometimes that's a little bit of a struggle but again like we, we try and like cut back on on comments coming back like that yeah and it's probably it's probably um, um, to say that with the um in there you can publish to a staging domain um which is probably ideal for for you guys with sharing with clients so they don't actually go into the web platform itself but yeah. they can access the page before anybody else can see it so if it's on a staging domain it doesn't go onto google it doesn't go yeah it doesn't go into any search engines or get registered that way only people with a link can find it so um that's a good and, way and that's, it makes it super easy i think a lot of the no code tools are, i think when you're seeing a static design on figma i know figma is like making leaps and bounds on how it does prototyping and animations and hover states and that kind of thing that didn't ever used to be the case you used to have a flat jpeg that you mm -hmm. sent someone and said okay oh well I'll send a second jpeg to show you the hover states which is just mad so i think anything that allows the the, the end user to see animation earlier on in the process the better because otherwise they just tend to not be able to see it and there's more amends later in the day so you know with vev we jump straight into the platform use that as the design tool for some of the simpler projects if not we'll use figma and then then move, move into it but it does streamline that if you're doing it that way around and sharing a link with some animation on. Perfect. Awesome. awesome. I think that's all the questions that have come through at the moment. So if anyone else has any more questions, do keep them coming. Um, an hour really flies by when you're having fun, doesn't it? And I'm in the summer room with the door shut and I'm like starting to melt. So uh, uh -huh. yeah, I'm <laughs> glad we've got five minutes left. <laughs> any questions from the audience you got? A few minutes left to ask them. If not, what there's one? no. Oh, did you get a new one? No, I was going to say, oh. in terms of uh, if anyone wanted to reach out to you, Han, in terms of potentially asking you to, <laughs> to do some work for you. Well, for well, Margot's already jumped to it. Margot on my team uh, works on a lot of, she's our project manager for, for Web Projects. She's already put the brief us link in there. So if you want to oh, get in touch, efficient. Margot's already jumped to it and uh, put the link in there for you to get in touch. But um, we are changing the name in the site soon. So it will be on hlabs.co.uk. Um, we're still changing all our emails and all of that stuff open but if you go on handspringit.com at the moment you can contact us with a contact form on the bottom of that Amazing. Great. we're getting some thank yous in the chat here thank you for oh, coming my pleasure. i haven't done a webinar in ages it was super exciting no well this is our uh, this is our first external um guest that we've had and it's been very insightful for for, for me at least and I'm sure Marlon would agree with me maybe not I don't know I can't I can't read her mind. no it's been amazing <laughs> and thank you for being so open and for sharing and just being who you are Han <laughs> well look that's love what it's it all about right yeah I'll, I'll interview you guys on our one soon right and then I'll put that all exactly. over social media. <laughs> exactly Okay, if there are, if there is not any more questions, we can round that off. There's no shame in giving people five minutes of their time back today. Uh, but just as a final remark, thank you so much for joining the Vev Lounge, Han. Hopefully you'll be back or maybe someone from your yeah. team. Um, 
loved having you and hope people can find the links here. It's probably not the last thing you'll see from, from Bev, X Hands, Bring It, or Age Labs. <laughs> yeah. So Yeah, you often feature on our showcase page. So uh, <laughs> keep an you eye out. Got more st- stuff coming. More stuff coming soon. That's good. That's good to hear. We look yeah, look forward to seeing it. But yeah, thank thank you very much for uh, joining us, Han. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, no problem. Cool. Until next time, Bevers. Bye everyone. Cheers. Bye. Bye.